what's up? My name is Jess and welcome to today's video. So today's video is going to be super unscripted. I don't have any plot points laid out. I don't have like any notes on my phone of what I'm going to say. I just kind of wanted to do like a mini story time slash a thing that will hopefully get you guys through hard times because you know stuff happens to everybody and even like your favorite Broadway stars get rejected from things and even a random girl on YouTube with a couple thousand subscribers also gets rejected from you know a dream job and it happens to literally everybody and rejection is such a normal thing and I think the point of this video is to normalize rejection or at least to attempt to normalize it because not everyone you see is successful and the people that you see that are successful have gotten so many no's in their lives that you probably like, you wouldn't even be able to count I literally cannot count the amount of rejections that I've gotten even from this year I just kind of wanted to talk about a rejection and to me it was a rejection that kind of hit home a little bit more than the normal ones and that was when I got rejected from my dream job. So basically if you guys saw I think it was either the last video I posted or one of the last ones I posted I was talking about how to say no and you know like one one door closes another one opens and the door that had opened in that video was getting a call back for my absolute top dream job ever and that was to perform in a foreign theme park as a vocalist so I'm not gonna mention the show but I will mention the company I auditioned for Tokyo Disney as a vocalist uh, about a month and a half ago and I had thought that I didn't get a callback for it because we were supposed to have heard like two weeks or so after the initial audition and I just kind of assumed that I didn't get it and it was totally okay like you know kind of sucks but I also had like heard about that specific audition not not too far in advance of the audition itself so I hadn't had a lot riding on on it but I was really excited about it and I went to the audition thought it was okay but I hadn't I didn't think that I had gotten a call back and turns out from that other video that I posted that that day that I had gotten that rejection from a dream role that I was going to like hopefully be doing but I, I gotta know I got an email that said that I got a call back for Tokyo Disney and if you guys didn't know to like Tokyo Disney or just living in Japan especially abroad as a vocalist in a theme park is like my actual top dream job I it, I would kill. I would kill. It's one of my top goals and has been for years. So to be able to get a callback was such an incredible thing. And I knew that the chances of me actually booking the job weren't weren't super weren't weren't. <laughs> I knew the chances of me booking the actual job weren't super high. But just the fact that I was able to move on and still be considered was such a big deal for me. So I had my callback for Tokyo a couple days ago. I was super super prepared. I went and I wrote all of this in like my post on Instagram. If you guys want to go check out that whole thing that I wrote. Basically, I had been preparing for two weeks. I was completely off book for like the whole thing. I went in. I felt really good about my makeup. I went out and I got a new outfit. And I did a face mask the night before and I was steaming in the morning before I went to my callback. So then I did my callback and it went great. I thought it was great. There was a couple things obviously that I could have improved on and there were things that didn't go exactly as like how I rehearsed them because you can't expect how you know how your nerves might take over over your voice or your breathing or the pianist might be going faster than the instrumental but basically I went in and I did a callback for Tokyo Disney which is my dream job and after I finished singing like the three songs that we were given to learn they said thank you so much I hope you have a great rest of your day and I said okay so I went out into the room and then I noticed that all the other girls that had been there like after after they all had auditioned they they were all gone except like two girls and I was like oh are do we leave and they're like oh did they ask you to stay and I was like no <laughs> and they're like oh they asked her to stay and it was like this one girl and the other girl was just waiting because it was raining and I was like oh so so do <laughs> was I just cut and I didn't know and I did like I didn't know until that moment I was like oh wait did I just did I just get cut from my dream job what like and it, it wasn't like a, a an anger thing or anything it was just like a, oh did that do I leave now like do I go get Chipotle <laughs> so I went and I asked um like the monitor guy that was there the stage manager ish person who runs the things and I was like oh so if we weren't asked to say like are we are we good to go and he's like yeah yeah I think so yeah you guys are good to go and I was like oh okay yeah sure and so I like wished everyone goodbye um the like two girls that were sitting there waiting and I walked out to my car and I was like I just got cut from my dream job like I just got cut and I was okay and I was like completely okay like I wasn't I wasn't super sad and it was it was something that I thought that I might be super sad about because because I was like just like putting this job up on a pedestal and this opportunity just was super super high up in like my goals and stuff and I thought I would just kind of like stab to the chest be like super sad about it but I walked out and it was raining 
for one. Uh, but I walked out and I realized that I wasn't sad. And I realized, like literally I got to the car and I sat there and I was like, well, they're gonna be back in six months. And I think in that moment I was like, I kind of realized how much I've grown as a person and as a performer and as someone who auditions and does callbacks and things in that like, I wasn't sad and I wasn't, I wasn't mad at this one girl for getting kept past the initial callback. There was like seven of us and only one girl got kept. Like, I wasn't mad at her, I wasn't mad at the team, I wasn't mad at anybody. I didn't have like any ill will, I was just like happy. I was happy and I was like even more motivated. And I was like, what's happening to me? What happened? I think coming to terms with rejection and accepting rejection definitely becomes easier when you <laughs> go through it more, um, i.e. me, I've been through so many rejections. But I think it's also easier when you realize that the people that you admire, um, and I'm not saying that like people admire me because I feel like that's weird, like, hey guys, friends, fans, I don't, I think that's weird. Um, not you. Anyways, <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. But just like the people that you admire. So like I admire Megan McGinnis. I admire Christy Altamere. I admire, ugh, I admire uh, Carrie Hope Fletcher. I admire all of these people, but they have also gone through so many rejections that you really don't hear about because people don't like to talk about it. And obviously it's not a fun thing to talk about the opportunities that you went after and you worked hard for and I'm throwing things, but it's not fun to to talk about the opportunities that you didn't get because it, it kind of hurts sometimes. But I think it's important to normalize rejection, especially in this field that is literally full of rejection. Literally, I audition probably about once a week, once or once a week or once every two weeks for just multiple different opportunities. And if I get a callback for it, great, that's amazing. Wow. But the chances of me, like the times that I've actually booked the job are very few and far between. And I let you guys know when I book things and I haven't let y'all know anything for a little bit, which means I really haven't booked anything. And I've been successful and I've had really great callbacks and I've been able to network with a lot of people and had things happen that I can't exactly talk about, but nothing really like for certain has been set in stone because I haven't really booked anything, but it hasn't meant that I'm not working towards it. And to me, I think it's super important to think about rejection as one step closer to actually booking the job. So let's say your life is written out and I definitely don't think that this is true, but let's say it's written out like a book and you have to get over five rejections to get to that one, the one job that you booked, but you don't know that the job that you're going to book is there because you, how would you know? So I don't know. I like to think of it as something is written out for me and whether that be from like God or the universe. And I don't know what I believe in, but whatever you believe in, you, you know, put that now in there. But I like to think of it as every rejection that I like have to face or that I go through in every callback that I work so, so hard on that I want so, so bad. And I picture all of these things about how my life could change and the YouTube videos that I would make like in Japan or something, or, or the, the, the theater vlogs that I would make in this new show that I've been cast as my dream role in, but they don't happen. But I like to think of that rejection as one step closer to something that's really going to be really great. And this thing that is actually right for me in that moment. So I got to my car after this whole Tokyo audition callback thing and I wasn't sad, I wasn't mad, I was just like really excited for six months from now when I would go in, completely know all of my stuff because I had prepped it so well like this time around and I go in and I see their faces again, I say hi, I'm back and I go do the thing again. And I was, I don't know why, like I was just like so excited to, just so motivated for it and I, I, I think when we get rejected, we like to think of it as something that was meant to happen in that like, oh, it, it wasn't supposed to work out because, oh, I have, if, if I was to leave in January when I was supposed to go to Tokyo, then I'd have four months left on my apartment lease, which uh, is me. Um, so the, what would I do? Where would, where would Salem go? Where, what would I do with my apartment? Would I have to pay all this money so that Ryan could live here by himself and I would still have to pay the rent on my apartment when I find a sublease? Like how would all this stuff work? And to me, I, I try to not worry about things that haven't happened because that is such a like, that is like my fatal flaw. I worry about everything. But I think like when I got back to my car and I was sitting there and I kind of realized all of these reasons of why maybe now wasn't the best time for me to go, I think that made it easier. And I think if you do think of it like that, of all the reasons that are good, nothing, don't think of things that are negative in this aspect, but think of things like, oh, I still, I'd have an extra four months to live in my apartment in Orlando, or like I, I wouldn't have to pay all this money. Or for example, I was emailing some like pretty important people about jobs that I really, really want, just like networking type of deal. That's what you do in the theater. And I got a really positive response the night before my callback about like, hey, we'll let you know when I 
auditions are. We'd, we're really interested in you. Maybe that's an opportunity that's about to come that maybe would not have been able to be there had Japan been there. So I think thinking about rejection as a positive thing is just the most important thing. And I feel like I've been rambling for so long and I'm not sure if any of these words are making sense, but rejection is such a normal thing in theater and it's something that really really needs to be normalized so that's why i'm sitting here in my bedroom with my little ring light on in this pink sweater to tell you guys that rejection is super super normal and it's okay and the faster that you can learn to kind of get over it and and it's okay to feel sad in the moment like oh my god it's so okay and i'd be lying if like you know after that audition after the callback i i was like oh it's fine and then that night i sat there and i was like well that kind of sucked like I, I put a lot of i guess eggs in the basket and it, it like that quickly it was kind of over at least for the next few months until they do their rounds again but i think it's just really important to think of every rejection as a positive thing it's a learning experience you know what to do next time you know how to improve yourself and they know your face and i think that is such an important thing in theater is just people like seeing your face and literally going to show face is like a, a phrase that people use but like really though you, you go to show face and you say hi i'm here i'm cool what's up and if you don't get it you come back in six months or whatever the next one is and you say hey i'm back again and they're like oh yeah i remember you you were here last time i'm like mm -hmm, i'm here again nice to see you and it's not it's not a negative thing it's not a petty thing it's literally just a i'm back again I really want this job. I'm going to try again. If I don't get it this time, see you again in six months, which is definitely what's going to happen with this because I don't know when you, when you know that you really want something. And for me working abroad, like in Tokyo or in Japan in general is such a big, big goal of mine. And it's one that I know will happen someday. And I hope someday soon, but it's something that like I've come to terms with the fact that it's going to happen and not that like a, oh, I'm putting it into the universe. I'm like, no, 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 it's, it's gonna happen. Like I, like I know it in my gut and I don't know when it's gonna happen, but I know that it will. And so every, every like effort that I put forth in, in trying to go maybe with, with Disney or maybe with Universal or just there's a ton of opportunities in Asia for performers and not even just Asia, Europe, like Africa, well, maybe not Africa. I don't know about Africa. I have no idea. But just in random cities everywhere, there are opportunities for theater people. And I'm a theater person who likes to travel. So why would I not try to go for those opportunities? This was a big ramble spiel and I hope some of it made sense. But basically, rejection sucks, but it doesn't have to. And if you think of rejection as a positive thing and you go and you go get your Chipotle after your rejection and you go eat your Chipotle and then you also go to the other health food store and buy vegan ice cream and vegan cookies and you just kind of have a day to, you know, kind of recover or just like treat yourself. <laughs> That's what I did. It's, it's so normal and it's so okay. And I want rejection to be normalized. I want people to talk about their failures and their rejections because it happens to literally everybody, literally Sutton Foster. I'm pretty sure she was rejected from her college. Like, I don't have the exact fact on that, but like, I'm pretty sure she auditioned for like a college and she didn't get accepted because they didn't think she was good. And uh, she is. That's my spiel. This video is a little bit longer than I meant it to be, but I guess I had a lot to say. So again, rejection is normal. Everybody goes through it and everybody goes through it a lot, but that does not mean that you should give up. So with that, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys are not already, hit the subscribe button below because it helps me out so much. Also, I have an Instagram where I post more things about my rejections and also my accomplishments um, over here. So go check that out. But for now, I will see you guys in my next video and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.